now for the latest edition of Alumni in Your Community, where this month we talk to a man who used his knowledge to help make companies more energy efficient. Hi, I'm Bob Botello. I'm a graduate of BCC Class of 69. I grew up in Fall River, and uh, through the fourth grade, I lived up in the Maplewood section and attended the St. Jean Baptist School and had a a uh, very fun time at that time that I can remember. Although my family was growing, my family kept having more and more children. So ultimately we moved to the East End near Columbus Park. And ultimately I became one of nine children. Uh, and I grew up mostly at, near the Columbus Park neighborhood and associating and having fun with the activities normally associated as kids with the Little League and pickup games and playing in the Park League, uh, Recreation League as teenagers and so forth. When I was a teenager, I started working at Mazzilli's Bakery when I was 14 years old, bringing the wood in into the garages where they, and then take the wood from the garage into the uh, bakery because they had wood-fired ovens back then. And being small at the time also and very thin, um, I used to go in there a couple of times a year and crawl into the ovens and make the, the ovens nice and level and so forth and get extra bucks that way, five, six, eight, ten dollars at a time, which when it was 25 cents to go to a movie, I was a fairly affluent kid at the time when I was a teenager, so I was able to go to movies and have a little bit uh, extra money to help my sisters and others and, and share. Prevo High School for one year, okay. and uh, had a profound interest in girls, and also some of the other activities I wanted to pursue. I ended up going to Durfee High School uh, for the last three years and graduated from uh, Durfee. When I had applied to other schools, and so forth. I wasn't certain if I was going to be able to afford to go and also I was looking at the military future uh, coming from a family that at the time was with uh, nine children, eight children. Um, I just had to be, I was on my own with resources and then when it did uh, come about and I read about it in the paper and a friend of mine told me he was applying and I saw that the credits would be transferable and I could uh, be able to work and go to school um, I applied and being one of the first students there accepted and when I had a student number with my last name starting with a B was very low, I get to select my own classes and so it was very unique where for one semester I went to school only Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays and then Tuesdays and Thursdays I worked just down the road and loading the, at 18 and 19 I was a stevedore with my union card working at the docks over here on Tuesdays and Thursdays and loaded uh, bananas and, and, uh, and pineapples with uh, grizzled veterans over there and uh, getting paid in cash at the end of the day and you say okay this pays for next next year's semester this is one book you know and so working along that line you, BCC was very unique. In the first energy crisis in 73 I had been studying and taking a couple of courses in architectural engineering and I missed the tea time to play golf with my uncle who was a very good golfer and had gone into the computer science in the 50s when he was in the Navy. And so when we were discussing later why I missed it because I had to wait too long in line to get gasoline, um, he was telling me I should be focusing to energy instead of um, architecture because of computer aided design and other things coming along. Uh, and, that, and I told him well, I'm really more interested in environment and he, he convinced me that if you are going to save the environment then you reduce energy. That's, that's where it really is and that I would have a better financial opportunity. So I was really looking in terms of what would give me a better future going forward. I started advising Mayor Viveris on the fact that the National Energy Act was going to be distributing millions of dollars in energy funds to cities and towns who have in place an energy conservation manager and energy management uh, strategy and uh, can apply for these funds uh, in the first first up to the bat would be the first ones to be able to get those funds and so uh, with that realization he appointed me the energy conservation manager of the city and I was responsible for following up on the National Energy Act Title III funding application and I submitted and I did all the energy audits on the city. I became a certified energy manager, became trained uh, by the State Department of Energy uh, and through the Department of Energy became a certified energy uh, auditor and I audited all the city buildings under a government grant. So I applied for a grant, got the grant, and did the city buildings, didn't cost the city any money. And then I took a leave of absence for my full-time job because that was volunteer in 78 to 79. It wasn't a, a, a paid position. So um, when that was done and I had all this information, um, then I became uh, 
full-time position as the energy manager for the city of Fall River. Everything came through what I do now for a living is that I get called in to Fortune 500 companies, some of the biggest companies in the world, and I do cutting edge technology and energy management. Technology that didn't exist sometimes until we actually developed it along the way, on the fly. Um, I recently did a program for Valero Energy, which brought out the Sitco Asphalt Refining Program uh, operations on the East Coast, and I established new energy metrics and new energy parameters of which to compare production on a daily basis to energy consumption and determine if, in fact, you were at your stated level of efficiency based upon your engineering design and operating parameters. My children went through school and we're finished with school and things were also different as responsibilities have changed. Um, I was able to give back and ultimately uh, was asked if I wanted to be on the board of uh, the directors for the BCC Foundation. And uh, Having had a situation where I know how important it is to have some help when things are not as uh, smooth as it might be financially, um, and I can speak in the first person, I was more than willing to try to uh, assist where I can. I get a self-satisfaction, and when I, I helped a little bit, I helped, because that area, what this general area, in, I travel around the country, and I see successful communities, and it's not all about economics, it's about an attitude. And the BCC gives a positive attitude to the whole area. It gives an attitude, positive attitude here. It gives a positive attitude in New Bedford now with the new center that can be constructed. It's giving a positive attitude in Attleboro. I mean, look at the number of applicants that applied as soon as possible. The place was filled within literally nanoseconds of academia in order for, for, for the spots that were available for people to learn. And so it, it's, it, it really gives to the area uh, sunshine when there's not much else giving sunshine to the whole area and it gives hope and that's the whole key and if I can help somebody with a little bit of hope um, I've contributed.